Hey y'all, Scott here. I will transform this into a better game. There's no game. Yeah. Who's your biggest enemy? I know you're somebody's. Time and time again, Nintendo proves they think the absolute lowest of their customer base. Go lower. Mario Sports Superstars. What you call what? I call how. How could Nintendo think they could get away with selling such a poor quality product? Next question. Why do I keep buying games from a company that treats me like dog sh? <laughs> how would I know they treat me like dog sh if I don't keep buying games from them? This is one of those bad Nintendo games your mom always warned you about. F you, mom. I should have listened. Mario Sports Games. Yeah, I met him once, and he was a dick! But well, once were fun and well thought out multiplayer spin offs became the bane of my existence. That's my kryptonite. Listen, for a while there, you could always count on Mario Sports Games to deliver the goods, alright? Not all of them may have been for everybody, but you could see the clear love, passion, and quality within each and every one. These weren't Mario Sports Games, these were Mario Sports Games. I mean, if I saw this happen at a baseball game. I'd never trust science again. Look at how wacky and fun all this is. Now look at FIFA. I don't even see colored socks. Hey, these are two sides of the same coin, and neither one is necessarily better or worse than the other. You may want your sports game to be as kooky as possible, or you may be wrong. But games like Mario Golf, Mario Tennis, Mario Baseball, and Mario Strikers all had their place. They had a purpose, a reason to exist. So did Lincoln. And you know what they did to him? I did not remember this in class. After Mario Super Sluggers on the Wii, Mario sports games weren't on a hiatus per se, but you can't deny something was up. Nothing for a few years, until Mario Sports Mix on the Wii in 2011. Sure, we got a Wii re-release of Mario's Power Tennis from the GameCube and the Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games titles, but those make my statements invalid. Mario Sports Mix seemed to be the ultimate Mario sports game. Four sports in one! The only way you could beat that is if well, that's just fucking ridiculous. As a kid, you couldn't fathom why you would possibly buy a single Mario Golf game instead of Mario Sports Mix. That's just idiotic to think you could get more out of one sport than four. And that's when I checked into rehab. Mario Sports Mix isn't bad, it's just largely skippable. Like, the only reason you'd play this is if you don't give a shit what you play. The four sports, basketball, volleyball, dodgeball, and hockey, are all structured and presented in the same way, which leads to none of them sticking out all too much. And because the developers had to divide their attention amongst four different sports, not one of them got the attention necessary to be anything more than a fun distraction. This game was developed by Square Enix. Yeah, right, and I'm a mass murderer. Damn it. Mario Sports Mix was a fine enough multiplayer game, just not one I ever went back to much. Though it wasn't of a bad quality, like I said, it was a fun enough distraction and fit right alongside the other games I've spoken about. Look at these special Mario themed arenas and mini games! All this craziness happening? You can play as Square Enix icons like Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest characters because Sleeping Dogs wasn't made yet. We may not have gotten, say, the new Mario Golf since 2004, but Sports Mix did enough to keep the dream of quality Mario sports games alive. Wait, what's that? No Mario Strikers, no Mario Baseball, bad Mario Tennis, good Mario Golf! I usually like to pinpoint the exact moment when a Nintendo fan is lying. I love this company. There it is. The quality and quantity of these games plummeted. Even Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games met some of their lowest lows in this era. For the most part, it no longer felt like the developers of these titles wanted to make good games. Rather, it felt like they were contracted to fill a release slot on Nintendo's calendar. You could almost tell how little they thought of the consumers by how lacking these games were in content. Mario and Sonic at Rio 2016 and Mario Tennis Ultra Smash being prime examples. Barebone sports games decorated with Mario characters, barely any unique environments, power-ups, wacky mechanics. Like, at this point, you you might as well play a regular tennis game, which is to say die. Mario Tennis Open was okay, and Mario Golf World Tour was quite good, but that didn't take away from the feeling that games like this were going downhill hard. But even after so many misfires, I'm always first in line to pick a new one up. Masochism. And you know what year a Mario sports game sounded real good? Yeah, we could've used one then. And 
2016. One of the cruelest years to be a Nintendo fan. 2015 may have had some of the worst releases in the company's history, but 2016 had some of the most nothing releases in the company's history. It was obvious Nintendo was biding time until the Nintendo Switch's release in March of 2017 and had very little left to supply Wii U owners until then. Though the 3DS release schedule was at least a bit more plentiful. However, most titles that year were just ports, localizations, Mario Party Star Rush. Yes, there was content on the handheld, but outside of Pokemon Sun and Moon, it wasn't substantial content. So believe me, when the Nintendo 3DS Direct presentation was announced for September 1st, 2016, everybody was positively negative. Keep in mind, with the Nintendo Switch launching that March, it wasn't formally announced until October, so nearly the entirety of 2016 was filled with fans frothing at the mouth for a reveal. Nintendo's home console was dead, their handheld was in purgatory, and their next console nobody knew anything about. So thank God I have hobbies. So after waiting, and waiting, and waiting, we finally got a showcase of nothing but Nintendo 3DS games. This crusty ass gadget from 2011, not only was it starting to get hard to be excited for games on the thing, but this also wasn't the thing we wanted to see games on. Any game that would come to this, the first question out of my mouth would be, why? Regardless, this 3DS Direct had numerous announcements showing that the handheld was still alive and well, but all of a sudden, tucked into a string of other games being talked about was a brand new 3DS game, a brand new Mario Sports game. This was Mario Sports Superstars. You sure about that? Ah, a successor to Mario Sports Mix. Maybe. Nothing about this feels or looks like the Wii game outside of the first two words in the title. No returning sports from that one, none of the same style or flair, no similar mechanics, not even done by the same developers. These may sound like they're from the same sub-series, but they really aren't. So then what is Mario Sports Superstars? Well, a collection of five different sports. That's possible? Well, I'll be. What are they? Maybe American football or boxing? Maybe even bowling. How about soccer? Uh, okay, well, we've done that before. Baseball? Yeah, I've heard of that one. Tennis? I don't know what you want me to say. Golf? Yep, yeah, those are all Mario Sports series. Horse racing. Took you long enough! During the announcement, they made sure to go, and when we say soccer, we're talking the full-on 11 versus 11 rules. And when we say soccer, we're talking the full-on 11 versus 11 rules. What do you think I was expecting? These are the full-fledged sports, they say. They not only have single-player tournaments for each one, but local and online multiplayer modes as well. It's launching in spring of 2017, and that's it! This is one of those announcements that you initially say, it's a Mario sports game, yay! But then you start looking at what the footage they showed you is actually showing you. Nothing. These characters have never looked more lifeless and out of place. It's like you're watching actual soccer with the players in mascot costumes. Tennis and golf look like they were ripped straight from Mario Tennis Open and Mario Golf World Tour on the 3DS, which, hey, maybe that meant those sports would be pretty in-depth since they were full-fledged games before, but I don't know, man. Then there's horse racing. You're damn right there is. But this was pretty much all they said about Mario Sports Superstars. A collection of five sports with Mario characters. Uh, sure, the concept had potential. It sounded like a pretty sweet deal. But then consider how Mario Sports Mix sounded like a great deal and turned out to be lacking a lot of depth and coupled that with how bland Superstars looked and it was fair to be a bit worried on this one. Seeing five and one on a product means you're getting something where none of the five is well thought out. But this one is different. This one has Bowser Jr. and I like Bowser Jr. An Amiibo card line is launching alongside this game. Wow, if they're willing to go all in on merchandise for this, it must be good. I mean, I love Tide. It launches March 24th, 2017, only a few weeks after the Nintendo Switch and The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild release. So, you know everybody was in the mood by then. Even though I had my doubts, releasing after a new era of Nintendo emerged, focusing on big, bombastic games full of quality and heart, launching alongside a trading card line, and the fact that multiple developers were working on this one game ensures me that this is going to be it. The ultimate Mario sports game. Holy sh! this game is horrible! Really three or four a loop there, I bet. First off, I must ask, what? Why is everybody so pissed off in the official art like, Jesus, Yoshi, it's just a damn golf ball! Hey, at least we get a free amiibo card included, where we no doubt can see even more of these angry character shots. I want to see Luigi cussing out a horse. Well, I'm just gonna pray before this he said f You know, this looks so familiar, but hey, I might be thinking of another Luigi horse-related experience. Including a free amiibo card with a game is a f 
they got me. Mario Sports Superstars Amiibo cards were available right alongside the game for five bones a pop with five unique cards included. What a fun concept. They're like baseball cards. Well, here we have Bowser heading a soccer ball, Donkey Kong standing triumphantly on a plate, a Baby Mario on the court, Metal Mario with his club, and Wario proudly displaying a horse. <laughs> These are all great, but something seems a little off. Ah. This one's wet. Well, that solves the mystery. Wait! This is no, no. Oh my god! This wasn't Wario art crafted out of love. This was crafted out of Photoshop! Many of these cards are just reused assets from previous Mario games. Soccer Luigi's from Mario 3D World, Golf Middle Mario's from Mario Kart 7, nearly all of the horse racing card art is from other games because prior to Mario Sports Superstars, the only horse racing art of these characters available online I can't show. Now, am I really upset at them reusing assets to fill up 90 cards worth of art? No, I just think it's incredibly jarring. There's so many different art styles used here. Poses from Mario Sports Superstars and cheaper poses from Mario Sports superstars so like some really high quality cgi and cgi art as old as the gamecube era art that was never meant to be used for a sports game this trading card line has it all even a binder released only in japan to contain every card only an absolute degenerate with nothing but spare time and a lack of drive to do something beneficial for society would buy this binder and filled out with every single mario sports superstar card imaginable so thank god I'm missing Birdo. Now, these are amiibo cards, which means you can scan them into Mario Sports Superstars. I have nearly all of them, so you'd probably ask me what they do. I don't know. We'll find out together. But first, we have to actually play the game to not like it. First off, opening movie, showing newspaper articles detailing the five sports at play here. It's a long news day. Bam! Mario Sports Superstars. The main menu screen here is straightforward and to the point. Our five sports, all laid out. You know what? Let's start with tennis. Words to live by. Let's go single player in it. Why not? A tournament. Oh, hey, Mushroom Cup like Mario Kart? This should be... Thanks. I should not expect anything from this. No fun environments, or items, or special moves. Damn, now that I'm not expecting anything, this game delivers. The tennis portion of the game is developed by Camelot, the same people who bring us Mario Tennis in general, so this is literally the same damn thing. You may assume this is just taking Mario Tennis Open on the 3DS and squeezing it into this title, but if anything, this is taking Mario Tennis Open and Mario Tennis Ultra Smash from the Wii U and... Well, it's not always a good thing when family gets that close. Now, it's an even simpler tennis game than before. That's impressive. I didn't think you could get more bare bones than Ultra Smash, but I also didn't think dogs could get jaundice. You hit the ball back and forth. You can hit A or another button for a different type of shot. But there's no Mario Flair. Less than even Ultra Smash. And all that game had was Mega Mushrooms being thrown onto the court. Somebody call the Mario reference police. Here... There's nothing. Ultra Smash may have been just tennis, but tennis in sports superstars is literally just tennis. There's a difference. And to portray how that's an issue, what am I supposed to gain from this? This is the most boring tennis video game experience I've ever had. It may be one of the most boring video game experiences in general. The only people who I can imagine having fun with this are the fans with social media presences who get free review copies of games from Nintendo and are too petrified to say anything bad about their games in fear of never receiving free review copies ever again. Hey Nintendo fans, this is another Nintendo fan here. You can tell I love Nintendo by my ability to buy merchandise. I've never played Metroid. Today we're reviewing Mario Sports Superstars on the Nintendo 3DS. How fun! This game has graphics and tennis. Yoshi is so cute, and Luigi makes me gassy. This is putrid. There are only four tennis courts to choose from, and they're all just variations of the same thing. Finishing one tournament in a cup just unlocks the next cup, which is just a harder difficulty. Exhibition mode is just playing a single match. Training features a ring and rally challenge. Ooh. I guess that just leaves multiplayer. Okay, well, let's play locally. Most multiplayer Mario games on the 3DS offer some form of download play, you know, where even if you don't own a copy of the game, you can play with somebody who does. Mario Sports Superstars? Oh, okay. Well, this is just the same game, but with more mouths to feed. That's where online comes in. This way, we can never feel alone while being alone. I'd rather just hire a PI for myself. You know, I feel like a lot of modern Nintendo multiplayer games replace actual content with online multiplayer, as if online is the only form of replay value you need. Like, oh, there's only four levels, but you can play them with strangers constantly over and over and over again online. But it's like, you need to give me a reason to want to play online outside of just being able to play online. And I can't even do that! Well, Mario Sports Superstars, 
knows what tennis is. I gotta hand it to Nintendo, because I don't want it. Let's move on to the other Camelot developed sport in the package, golf. Because what else would we do? Stop playing? Yeah, yeah, Mario Golf World Tour is a great Mario Golf game, but I want to play golf with the option of playing four other sports, but picking golf anyways to show how much I care. Mario Sports Superstars offers that, in addition to nothing. Golf, all right. Tournament stroke play? These developers did their research. So the user interface, animation, even most sounds are ripped right from World Tour. This is, by all extents and purposes, a surgically removed bit of World Tour in a city it don't belong. Out of all things they ripped from World Tour, why did they make new courses for this game? I mean, you obviously have no shame, why act like you don't? World Tour has some great courses, and loads of them at that. Mario Sports Superstars, we have four golf courses to play on. Emerald Woods, Gold Links, Crystal Beach, and Wild Valley. Damn, I was hoping for gray roads. Putting an adjective before your setting doesn't make it unique. As Especially if the adjective already describes what you'd assume the setting would look like. Damn, you got woods. Green woods? I'll drink to that. These courses are some of the most basic, no frills, no personality golf courses I've ever seen in a video game, which is ridiculous considering I'm playing as this on them. You're telling me they not only have a giant fucking lizard playable, but his dad too? And this is the course you play as them on? Why is this so generic? Why are there no Mario elements on the course? No power-ups, no enemies, no iconic characters on the sidelines, no iconic locales! I mean, th the gameplay is good, it's ripped right from a good game, but it's only a part of a good game, and a fraction of what made it good in the first place! You give somebody a page from the Grapes of Wrath, like, yeah, it's well written, but what do you want me to do with this? Overall, I would much rather play golf in this package than tennis. I feel like even with the generic courses, there's more to see here with far more strategy and replayability. I still f***ing hate it. Alright, so those two portions of the game were developed by Camelot. The other three were developed by one Bandai Namco Games. I'll drink to that. Alright, well to be fair, Bandai Namco was the developer of the Mario Baseball game, so if anybody could nail baseball in this collection, they'd be a close 22nd. Wow, what stadium do you want to play in, guys? Country field or big field? Baseball in Superstars is one of the most lifeless experiences I've ever had in a video game. I know that for a fact because while I was playing, I was shot. This is getting difficult. I mean, do I really have to explain why something is boring? Time to pitch the ball. Time to hit the ball. All right, two down. This is miserable. It's one of the most pathetic and slow experiences I've ever had in a video game. It may function and work fine enough. I mean, it's just baseball, but that's no excuse. There are loads of sports games that are just the sport, nothing crazy, but their gameplay is actually compelling. This? I cannot fathom anybody looking at this and thinking, what fun? All I can think is, what fun? The target demographic for this is the child whose parent bought them this for their birthday, and they have to do something on a nine-hour car ride. So, yeah, let's play the baseball tournament mode for three hours, three times in a row. Sure, you can throw different pitches, but all you do is hit a different button. Outside of that and the fancy UI organizing everything, there's not as much as you'd think separating this from baseball on Atari. I mean, you have these goofy ass wedding toppers of characters playing baseball, and what do you do with this opportunity? Drink to that. This is a waste of human energy, both as a player and for the developers. The four different fields, aren't different. They have such minimal variances that I question why even go to the effort of trying to pretend you had enough willpower to make multiple fields. And it's set up exactly like the other games. The same tournament brackets, the same cups, the same exhibition mode, and training mini games just hit within the rings, just like tennis and golf and soccer, the most popular sport in the world. This is even fucking worse! Oh my god, so the different fields in baseball didn't matter because fucking baseball. How about the four different fields in soccer? Yeah, I'm more of a kingdom stadium guy myself. I think soccer and baseball are both in the running for worse than this package. I mean, baseball is way more boring, but soccer is much better, and when you compare soccer and Mario Sports Superstars to the actual Mario soccer games... I mean, what do you prefer? A nice juicy steak or a dead f***ing dog? I mean, look, these sports 
function. They're the sports they claim to be, but there's no hook. It's literally the most basic form these sports could have taken in a video game. And when there's nothing to the gameplay and there's minimal content to play around with, I mean, damn, you go to all the work of naming four stadiums to end up not seeing any differences due to the camera angle, you end up with one of the most boring video games I've ever endured. This is painful. This is horse racing. It's about damn time Nintendo listened. Horse racing is the last and most unique sport in the package. It has a stable. Why doesn't tennis have a stable? Why even bother including horse racing? I mean, you get the same response to the game if it just included the four sports. For all I knew prior to 2017, four sports in one was all man was capable of. What's a fifth gonna do for sales? Oh. Well, horse racing is obviously the most fleshed out of the bunch. At first, we can pick out a horse. Which is more than I can say about tennis. These all look like they belong in a damn Popeye cartoon. We get to pet it and customize it and ride it in first person? <laughs> Why? Just because you add a pet simulator portion to your horse racing minigame doesn't mean you've added value or depth. Like, when you really see value in bowling from Wii Sports having a ball polishing minigame, polish your ball for a better roll. Or you could just play bowling. It's the same with this. You don't need this. The horse racing isn't complicated. It doesn't need this tacked on element. You can just completely skip, by the way. Oh, spending time with your horse brains its day and maybe makes it better on the racetrack. Yeah, like you need that for something as deep as a Mario Party mini game. In fact, a mini game for Mario Party 3 had similar gameplay. Mash a button to make your horse go faster, grab carrots to keep their stamina up. Here, you race horses on basic tracks. You can do a star dash by collecting star dash emblems on the course. You need to grab carrots to keep the horse's stamina up. That's it. There's nothing special about this or the horses outside of a damn monkey riding one. And look at these race courses. Oh, green farm? I gotta be honest, the amount of detail they put into the damn horse racing mode is at the very least pretty commendable. I mean, graphically, this looks all right for 3DS. They could have just put this in like a drab little indoor horse racing arena. But the fact they put us on this lush hill, a yellow leaves hill no less, shows that they did care. Just not that much. It's horse racing. What makes horse racing different from regular racing? Giving a shit. The problem with this sport isn't that it's horrible, it's just completely disposable. Why would you play horse racing in this game when you can pick up Mario Kart 7, which, hey, was more often than not included for free with 3DS systems, especially around the time this came out. The only people I see finding value in this smell bad. It's pointless. The stable where you customize your horse doesn't add anything other than a false sense of pride in the children who play this. The horse racing itself is just boring and too slow. It's not broken or god-awful, but it just lacks any spark, any thing in general that makes you go, so that's why this exists. It's just it's just lame. And because of that, it's my fourth least favorite in the collection, while simultaneously being my second favorite. Every game has the same damn training mini games of do something through a ring, or just simple batting practice, rally challenge, free training, which doesn't count as content. That's just the same as free race, damn it. Every game has online and local multiplayer, which is nice for games like golf, I guess, but for games as simple as baseball, I really don't see the value in it. Each sport has the same roster of playable characters, a standard if not larger than expected affair for a Mario sports game, but we do have two unlockables. Oh man, well maybe they do care. Congratulations! For aggravated assault. Yeah, your only unlockables are Metal Mario and Pink Gold Peach. For Metal Mario, you have to beat all the cups in a sport to unlock them. A Pink Gold Peach beat ring training on hard in a sport, and only in that sport do you unlock them. If you unlock Metal Mario in tennis, he's still not available in soccer, so you have to separately unlock both of these characters in each sport individually, because f the clocks. Time is now measured by how long it takes me to put lead poisoning on a horse. Amiibo! With the aid of Amiibo cards, we can unlock these characters for each sport instantly if we happen to have the card for that sport and character. See, that's great and everything. I'm happy to have sold my dog for a nearly complete set, but there's gotta be more to the Superstar Amiibo cards than just unlocking two characters. Well, firstly, these aren't the only cards in the game. Sure, we can scan in each and every Amiibo card to gawk at our digital Amiibo card collection. This is the life. But the game also has a completely separate card collecting mechanic, where you have over 300 digital exclusive cards with equipment and characters and horses on them, and you get a pack of 10 for a thousand coins you're in from playing the sports, or you can get a three pack for 300, or you can scan one of three amiibo cards per day to get a three pack for free. So you scan amiibo cards to unlock the amiibo card in a digital collection, and you can also scan amiibo cards to get different digital cards, which are completely separate entities from the amiibo cards. What? 
Like, this is just confusing. Why are there two separate digital collections of cards to collect in this game? Why not have one or the other? Scanning the amiibo cards into the game to have them as a part of your amiibo card collection doesn't do anything! I think it's mostly just to make you feel better about collecting the amiibo cards. The other cards are a bit more useful in game and are separate entities even though some of these digital exclusive cards use the same artwork from the amiibo cards. I'm gonna fucking lose it. Cards with gear on it unlock that specific gear for the character to sign for. So this golf club is for Mario. I can now use it in golf while playing as Mario. It doesn't do a damn thing, it just looks a little different. Yeah, the digital cards are also mostly just for show. The, the gear cards give you new skins for soccer balls, tennis rackets, etc. Though you can't customize who uses what. The Fire Flower Bat is only for Mario. The Luma Racket is only for Rosalina. So this entire card portion just confuses the hell out of me. Both the Amiibo card album and digital card album are separate, but both useless. Oh, well, the Amiibo cards themselves are useless. They only work in this game. Something Nintendo prided themselves in with Amiibo was how they'd work across multiple games. The same Mario Amiibo that works in Smash Brothers works in Mario Party. These Amiibo cards aren't at all the same. You'd assume a Mario card would work as a Mario Amiibo elsewhere. No! So what's the purpose of them? Well, I never mentioned the Road to Superstar mode. Scan in three Amiibo cards, place them on this grid however you'd like, and train these characters to become the superstar variant of said character, which would increase the stats of them in their respective sport. So let's train Tennis Donkey Kong, Golf Luigi, and Horse Birdo to be the best they can be. This is f***ing Arkanoid. That's all this is. You just use three balls from the three sports of the cards you choose and play a minigame until you reach a boss fight. Afterwards, that character is upgraded. I sold my dog for this. Hi. Mario Sports Superstars playing Scott is dead. He's no longer interested in supporting a company releasing a product just to release a product for consumers to buy for no other reason than the color red being on the cover. Or at least that's what he read in this recent entry of Anti-Consumer Quarterly. You get four of those a year? A week. But he's a changed man. A dead man. And to prove his commitment to death, he wrote here a few choice final words. Mario Sports Superstars is a sick joke of a video game. One that fails as both a sports game and a Mario sports game. As a sports game, it is a slow, tedious, and boring representation of each activity. As a Mario sports game, it features Mario characters and stops there. Tennis and golf are simply stripped down demos of both Mario Tennis Open and Golf World Tour. Soccer and baseball are laughably overly simplistic and slow compared to the standard Mario Strikers and baseball games. And horse racing is just utterly pointless in the package. Couple that with amiibo support that is completely unnecessary in addition to a separate but equally as useless card collecting mechanic in-game that isn't the same but uses some of the same card art as the amiibo cards, it just adds up to the confusing mess of a filler title Mario Sports Superstars is. Don't get me wrong, you could do worse than this. Everything works and if you want five generic sports in one video game, I fear for your taste. But Mario Sports Superstars delivers in those regards. You do get five sports, though in the most lifeless form imaginable. This isn't a game to me. This was an experiment by Nintendo to see how little effort they could put into a package they claim to be far more than it truly is. A game like Mario Tennis Ultra Smash may have been worse, but Mario Sports Superstars had more weight behind it. An entire amiibo card line, multiple developers, pushed by Nintendo as something greater than it truly was, which was a hacked together, lifeless, loveless project created out of a need for a new 3DS game and nothing more. Or at least that's what I got from this.